Hello and welcome to our new YouTube tutorial in which we are going to create this jumping square animation. The project will be built based on just pure HTML and CSS. As you can see we have here a square that is jumping on something like the rubber. It changes its shape and also those sticks are skewing in order to create the natural effect. Ok, so that's all about the project, let's go ahead and get started. I have created a new folder on the desktop called Jumping Square, which right now is empty. Let's open this folder in VS Code and create our working files. I mean index.html and style.css. Then open the index.html file and create a basic HTML document. Let's place here an exclamation mark and then hit tab or enter. Okay, first of all, let's go ahead and change the title. It's going to be jumping square. And then link the CSS file. Let's specify here style.css. Okay, lastly, let's run the project to the browser using live server. And then place the editor and the browser side by side, like so. Alright, at first I'm going to create the HTML markup. Let's open the div tag, which is going to be the container. Then I'm going to open another div tag, which will wrap the entire animation. It's going to be wrapper. So inside the wrapper we will have a couple of different elements. The first one is going to be the rubber. Then we will have two sticks. Let's use here classes stick and left stick. Then duplicate this code and change left into right. And finally, let's create another div tag, which is going to be the square. All right, that's it about the HTML markup. Let's move on and start to write CSS. First of all, I'm going to create some reset and default styles for every element. Let's select them using an asterisk. I'm going to get rid of default margin and padding. Let's set both properties to zero. And also I'm going to set box sizing to border box. So throughout this project, we're going to use RAM as a measurement unit. Right now, one RAM equals 16 pixels by default. And I want to convert one RAM into 10 pixels. For that we have to decrease the font size of the HTML element and we have to make it 62.5%. Alright, next I want to take care of the container. Let's define its width and height. The width is going to be 100%. As for the height I'm going to make it 100% of the viewport. That's it about the container right now. Next I'm going to customize the wrapper. First of all, let's define width and height. The width is going to be 100 RAM. As for the height, I'm going to make it 80 RAM. And also change the background color. Let's make it 1F5050. Actually, the wrapper is going to be placed in the center of the page. And for that, I'm going to use a CSS grid. Let's assign to the container display grid. And then place items center. Ok, let's move on and continue to customize the wrapper. Next I'm going to make it a little bit rounded, so let's use border radius with the value 5 RAM and also create some shadow effect. Let's place here 2 RAM, 2 RAM, 6 RAM and as the color I'm going to use 888. Alright, so that's it about the wrapper, let's move on and start to work on the sticks. Let's select them using a common class name. First of all, let's define width and height. The width is going to be 3 RAM. Then the height will be 40 RAM. And also change the background color. I'm going to use here a color called Coral. So here we have both sticks. Let's make their top sides slightly rounded. Use border radius with the values 1 RAM, 1 RAM, those are the top sides, and then we need 0 and 0. 
After that, I'm going to take care of the positions. We need to make their positions absolute. And actually, we will need position absolute for every element, which are children of the wrapper. So I'm going to select every div element inside the wrapper and then set their position to absolute. We're going to position elements according to the wrapper, so let's assign to it position or relative. Okay, after that, let's take care of the positions of the sticks. Both of them will have bottom zero. Next, I'm going to define the positions for the sticks separately. Let's select left stick and set the left position to 15 RAM. Let's duplicate this code, change left into right. Also, we need here right with the same value. Okay, besides that, I'm going to add a little shadow effect to both sticks. Let's start with the left stick. The values will be 0.2 RAM, 0, 0.5 RAM, and the color 555. As for the right stick, we will need a similar shadow effect, but the first value will be negative. Okay, that's it about the sticks. Next, let's take care of the ruber. Let's define with a height. The width is going to be 67 RAM. As for the height, it's going to be 50 RAM. And also, I'm going to use here some temporary background color. Let's say red. Okay, next let's take care of the position of the ruber. Let's define left position. It's going to be 16.5 RAM. As for the bottom, it's going to be 24 RAM. Besides that, I'm going to add to it border at the bottom and also a shadow. So the border bottom is going to be 1 RAM, solid, and the color is going to be coral. As for the box shadow, we need here 0, 1 RAM, 0, and the color is going to be D, D, D. Alright, that's it about the rubber. Next, I'm going to take care of the square. Let's select it and define a width. It's going to be 14 RAM. We need the same height, so I'm going to use here a property called aspect ratio with the value 1. Then let's change the background color, make it white. And also I'm going to make the square rounded using border radius 2 RAM. Alright, next let's change the position of the square. Let's define the left position, make it 44 RAM. And also I'm going to add to the square a little shadow. Let's insert here 0, 0, 0.2 RAM and the color 555. Okay, so everything is ready to start to work on the animations. Let's start with the rubber. So throughout the animation we will change the border radius and also we will move down the ruber itself. So let's go ahead and create CSS keyframes with the name ruber anim. So we will have a couple of different steps. At 0% and 20% we will change the border but we won't move the ruber. So we need these two steps here. The border radius is going to be 0. And then we need transform, translate with y direction and with value 0. Next we will have 50 and 60%. On those steps we will change the border radius and move the rubber down. So the border radius is going to be 0, 0, 35 RAM and 35 RAM again. As for the transform, translate y. It's going to be 23 RAM. And finally, the last two steps will be 65% and 100%. Here we will change the border radius and move the element to its default place. So the border radius is going to be 0. As for the transform translate Y, it's going to be 0 as well. Okay, so the keyframes are ready and we can run the animation. 
we need here the name of the animation, Rubber Anim. Then the duration is going to be 2 seconds. Also, we need the animation to be infinite. And then it's going to be linear. So, as you can see, the Rubber is moving and the animation runs fine. We can get rid of this temporary background color from here. Alright, next we have to create the animation for the square. We should match the movement of the square and the rubber. Let's create new CSS keyframes and call it square anim. So from 0% to 20% we should move the square a little bit down. So at 0% we need transform, translate y with the value 5 ram. Then from 20% to 50% we have to move the square down again. So the value is going to be 40 RAM. In this case we change the speed. Then at 50 and 60% we will move the element down but with a different speed. So the value is going to be 64.5 RAM. Next comes 62% where we have to move square up the value is going to be 45 RAM after that we will have 80% where we have to move the element up and also rotate it so the value is going to be 10 RAM and also we need to add here rotate Z 90 degrees and finally at 100% we need to move again the element up and rotate so the value is going to be 5 RAM alright so that's it about the square animation let's go ahead and run it we need here the name square anim then the duration 2 seconds then infinite and linear ok so as you can see everything was fine and the only thing that we have to do is to create the animations for the sticks they should skew once the square hits the rubber let's create the keyframes for the left stick I'm going to call it left stick anim so during the animation we should rotate the stick according to the z-axis at 0 and 30% we won't rotate the element yet so we need transform rotate z with the value 0 then at 50 and 65 percent we'll rotate the stick slightly so the value is going to be 2 degrees and finally at 80 and 100 percent we'll rotate the stick back to its default position so the value is going to be 0 alright so everything is ready let's run the animation use here the name left stick anim then duration is going to be 2 seconds then again we need infinite and linear so as you can see the stick is rotating but that's not what we need here it is rotating from the center because the origin of the transformation is set to center by default we need to change it so the origin is going to be bottom center Alright, so as you can see, now everything looks fine. Let's run the animation for the right stick as well. I'm going to copy this code and paste it down below. Let's change the name. We need here right stick anim. And also we need to change the value of the rotate z function. It should be minus 2 degrees. Let's copy the animation property. And change the name. Alright, so as you can see, everything works perfectly. The only thing that I want to do is to assign to the wrapper overflow hidden because the sticks are moving outside of the wrapper slightly. Alright, that's it. Finally, with this project we are done and I hope you enjoyed it. If you like this video, then please thumbs up, comment below, share it, subscribe to our channel and click the bell to get notified on coming tutorials.
See you next time.